Okay, we're going and you see what we're doing there. Thank you. You're welcome. Very kind of you. <clears throat> so, a little bit of smoke we've just blown in. That's starts from eating the, eating the honey. And then, um, so, and the smoke is also blocking the transmission of the alarm pheromone. So, typically, a nuke ready for sale will have two frames of resources and a few frames of brood in there in various stages. And so they're still building up to being ready to go. So we start off on the outside. And the uh, there's honey here. The queen cup there, but that doesn't mean anything. I've got some brood here. So honey with the white cappings here. You get as close as you like. Don't be afraid. And these coffee colored cappings are brood. So they're between day nine and day 21. And those are the drone over drones? here? Like the No, cone? that's honey here. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see any drone cells on here in particular, but they maybe along the outside area. edge there yeah. would be. Okay. Just for now, I'm gonna put this down here. And that's okay to do to lean it up against the tree? Or? Yep. Okay. It is. Now, if the queen was to fly away for whatever reason... She would not. But it, if she would, would, they, would, the, would the hive know to create a new one? Yes. If, if you killed her or took yeah, her out yeah. or something like that, yes. But she won't just leave. So what we have here is we've got some drone cells. These ones, that, big bullet-shaped ones around here. We've got some eggs in here, some honey here. I can actually see eggs in the bottom of the yeah. cell here, and we've got cat brood here. So but those we'll little those, white we'll, Yeah, we'll lift this up. Yeah. We'll see what's on the other side first before we shake it about. You never know, we might see the queen here. You probably did an eye for it. Did you say this queen was marked? This queen actually is marked. She's got a light blue marking on her back. I think this one mm -hmm. does, anyway. Is that last year? I'm sorry? What year? Is blue last year? Blue is last year, yeah. So, if you look, if you want to see eggs, they're in these cells here. They're very easy to see. By comparison. Which, in these ones here. Okay. See a little white tiny white sausage on the bottom of the cell. Do you see how tiny we're talking about? Yeah. Sometimes it's easier if you're holding the frame, but yeah. however you want. Oh uh, yeah, just a tiny bit. Is that hard with the face thing? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, seeing past it. So. Yeah, I think it's... Usually yeah, best yeah, with the sun at your I back. But of course we've got no sun today. Now also you'll see along here, while well, they're looking for eggs over there, in here you can see the larvae. Oh, yeah. They're sort of about six to seven days old. These are eight days old, pupate, just about to pupate. Now these are at least eight to nine days old. And the multicolored stuff, there's a bit of pollen mixed in here, so there's a lot of pollen down here. And likewise, over here there's a lot of pollen mixed in with this frame as well. Again, very similar to the other one, pattern-wise. Cat brood on this side with eggs in, in between, a bit of pollen mixed in there. Same on this side. So we've got a bit of brood on the first frame, on these two. Haven't seen the queen yet. I'm sorry, the, and the lumpy is the... The lumpy. This this yep. stuff is all capped brood, and hopefully we'll see a frame with a bit more solid pattern of brood. There's the queen. Yep. Oh yeah. The queen's got the 
bit bigger, just blue yeah. on the back here. But you don't need it yeah. yeah, but look how big that yeah, abdomen is. Yeah. She does stick out after you get used to seeing it. Also, when she passes through a big field of bees, they sort of part ways for her. Yeah, I was saying. So right now this comb's not really covered with bees tremendously, but as it gets more and more full of bees, as she passes through, they sort of part ways for her. So why does she choose that one or she go to different ones? Well, she goes to all of them. Yeah, she'll go on every comb. She'll spend most time on the ones that have the most room to lay. And this yeah. one's got plenty of room to lay on it. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's big. Now you're doing all this with just that one little puff of smoke, huh? Yeah, well <laughs> generally speaking they don't need it at all. Okay. Um, but I'm just showing you putting the smoke in just for the, just so you, you've seen it done. But generally they'll stay pretty calm throughout. Do you use it every time you come out here though or do you bring it with you? I tend to, yes. It, you tend to find that if you don't use smoke on a rig, if you if you tend to regularly see your bees without smoke, they start getting used to the, the person that's the, the thing that's in, uh, intruding into the hive, and they start recognizing your smell as opposed to the smoke, which is blocked at all. Okay. And I used to find because I was disturbing my hives to cut out clean cells and things, and after a while, it really ticks them off. If I'm not using smoke. I was finding every time I went out in the yard, a bee would come <laughs> bouncing off my head. Okay, I was saying to Harold Swan, why, why is this? He said, are you using smoke? And he said, no. And I said, they recognize you. Because you're the guy that keeps on going into the hive, and they, they can recognize your smell until they're trying to chase you off. Right. So, but if you use smoke, you stop them recognizing you as an individual as well. And that, that makes it nice. That explained well, it to me. So, lots of honey on there, pollen around that. Where's the pollen? Pollen is the colored stuff there. Okay, so like the orange. Yep. Is exactly. On this side will be more of the same, a lot more pollen in there. That's mostly full of pollen. Now that's dandelion pollen because it's orange. Predominantly, I would say so. But you'll find that most of the pollen looks orange. Yellow or orange of some sort. I'm having some m ms <laughs> <laughs> So that's what a nuke would look like when you're buying a nuke. Um, so these will be available for sale in a few more days, by which time more of the brood is hatched out. So typically you'll probably have a little bit more bees in than you're seeing today. Now you close the holes and stuff for us to take them home, right? Yes, yeah, so when, they were, when they're being transported, what I do is they've got ventilation on both sides, both ends box down and on these these entrances as you see here I'd put a piece of screen on stapled on to there okay. and so as long as you don't lift it by the lid and open it up that Ooh. way or knock the screen off they should be pretty bee proof but <coughs> excuse me I'd always recommend that if you have a pick a choice of transporting them in a pickup than a then in the cab I'd always put them in the bed of the car because it's not a hundred percent bee proof there 99.9%, but some escapees can happen. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Down there. yeah, that's the best way, because they're just looking for their way out. They're right. not, they're not uh, looking to, they're just sort of confused. So let's go into a slightly bigger hive now. Yeah, it's only going to settle. Well, I'm scared they're going to fly into my holes in my shoe. You should be okay, I keep but I wouldn't her. stand right in front of any any hive, because that's where the highest concentration of bees will be. Is this okay? look right there. You should be good there. And anyone who wants to come up to see on either side here, that's fine. So, remember I mentioned these these foil covers? I can find them quite easily. And that's so they don't yeah. do the honey <laughs> on the top, right? Yeah, but I also use it like an inner cover at times as well, generally. Still got some of the insulation and things. So some of these things I don't bring in until sometime in the in the summer. So they're just growing from this hive into the second, from the deep box, and they're expanding into my second box now. And so this is still foundation out here. That's giving me a bit of room to work with. Now I can move them across. And they're starting to build from the bottom upwards here. Yeah. You see, they're starting to draw the comb from 
joining the bottom of the the top of the bottom chamber to the bottom of the top one up here so this is all just comb being built I don't see anything of significance in here to show you at the moment so they're just expanding up here this one may have been a bit built before I even gave it to them but they're expanding right up here now and the Queen has been up here laying eggs in fact she's on this frame there's no mark on this queen, but you'll see that she parts ways as the bee, mm. as she passes through, the bees sort of part ways for her. It's right there. Yep, that's right. Oh, yeah. They kind of just... So she's just looking for spaces to lay eggs, mm. and these are all eggs of about four or five days old, so these are young larvae, really full of royal jelly. There's lots of eggs that she's freshly laid out here. But look how creamy the bottom of those cells look and that's just thick with royal jelly oh, you can see the little the worm bees are literally sitting in a pool of food there now and then the ones that are tending to them are 21 to how many days probably about 50 days or so yeah okay. they speak typically two two weeks to three weeks as young bees okay feeding them so we've got the queen on this side and where did she go? now is this a drone she that may have been a drone, yes. She, it's she, she, there's a drone. There's a drone right there. Yep, right here. Drone. Okay, yep. That was a drone then. Is the queen gone over to this side? Or is she still on the other side? Looks like there's a lot more activity now. They're annoyed we're out here, aren't they? Okay. Yep, there's more. Oh, here the queen's right on top of the other bees here. Right up here. Yep. So now that we know the queen is over on this frame, we could take this opportunity to do a mic check on another frame. So we know the queen is here. Let's see if we have a frame of open brood here. With lots of open cells here on both sides. So there's a nice lot of young bees on here, ideal to do a mic check. So we know the queen is here, so we know if we sample these bees, we're not going to hurt the queen. So would somebody mind getting that uh, little uh, thing off the wagon, please? Now you often see bees build little bridges of connecting comb from one comb to the other here. So when you have that, I just trim it off. Just take it right off. And this goes into my little bucket for collecting more beeswax. Is that what okay. This is? So who would like to hold this for a moment? You hold it by these edges there. Great, thank you. And what we'll do is we'll set up our mic check here. Thank you. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check. Okay, so we'll have this open. We'll put some alcohol in there. But making sure we don't spill it inside the hive. <clears throat> and we'll put about an inch of alcohol in there. What happens when you drop one? Do they get mad? Drop one what? The frame? Like, yeah. Uh, they'll, most of them will fly up. Most of those younger ones are going to stay, drop at your feet and they're going to be very confused. And they'll eventually walk in, but they, they'll be a little ticked off. Yeah. But not usually a big issue. Have you dropped one? I'm sure you have. Oh, plenty of times, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> And I dropped one the other day with the queen on it. That was fun. Ooh. But uh, we found her. She stayed on the frame. Okay, so now, in fact, just so we don't lose, re lose too many bees, because not all of them managed to go inside there. I will miss with a few. Watch your feet with your crocs. This is the point at which I want you to stand back. <laughs> but now most of the bees are on this side here, so I'm just going to go. Ooh. Now the older bees fly up, and they're heading back here. Young bees stay put because they can't fly. Actually, they don't. Yeah, they really don't fly for the first week or so, maybe maybe more. So now to to make my scoop, I've got half a cup of bees. They're going in there. You figured that was 300 bees, right? That's very close to 300 bees. That's right. So they're dead now, and these bees. I'll go in back. So now, so we shake this for about a minute. I'll 
pass this on to somebody who wants to shake them for about a minute. Now, does this sound like normal bees or is this angry bees? They're not angry. This sounds normal because we just stirred things up. See, there's a lot of bees fanning here, yeah. sticking their butts in the air because they've just been really disoriented. After a little while, this will calm down a little bit. We've got our queen in here. We're going to close this hive for now. Shake you know the queens in there. When you get to this amount, do you just mark them if they like if you've done the check on her, or do you just remember? Uh, I generally use it as I'm, I don't have to specifically know an individual hive. What I would do is I'd make a note of the what I found in the apiary. So I'd take three, four, five samples in the apiary like this, and I say, okay, I found one mite, one mite, four mites, one mite. Then I know I'm still below the threshold and I have to worry about it. If I started getting higher than that, then uh, it's time to treat. So we should be good there with the shaking. And if there are mites on the bees, they'll be floating about in the liquid. So let's see what we find. There's the odd scale. And I don't see any mites in that, which is good news. So in this sample, we've got no mites. We would normally see, there's a, our little things floating around uh -huh. in there. That one's close, but it's the wrong shape. Okay. But that's what a mite would look something like, this and little that's flake. Just like a wing. Like, yeah, that's right, like there's a wing there. So a few things get washed off the bees. Mm. So we now know this hive, as far as we can tell, is mite free. That one. It's not mite free, it's just below the level at which we can count. So I'm taking these out. And we're ready to use that alcohol again for another wash when we come across another hive with a queen on it. Okay, so that's one zero so far. This is great. May as well look in this hive as we're right here. It'll be roughly at the same sort of state. These hives were both one of the queens that I reared myself here. So I reared these from queen cells last year. So we shall see what we have here. So what does that top do for you, that aluminum? Or? It's like an inner cover. Um, I had it on in the winter time, but uh, I, I kind of like them in the in the summer so as well. So you keep them? Okay. So it keeps yep. them from making cone on the top? Right? It does, but actually when, it, when you've got this no, no rim on it, it, you don't even have to worry about it. it. But one thing I do like about it is it forms like a gasket at the top. Mm -hmm. And it saves the bees having to seal up the cracks and that sort of thing. Oh, so I yeah. kind of like it as a, a bit of a gasket. I may go over to using these rather than wooden inner covers. So you don't have to smoke this one? Actually, I forgot to, but look what's happening. They're, They're not really, yeah. <laughs> not, not getting too excited, at least not yet anyway. Yeah. So we'll take out a frame here. I'll see where they're building and if they're building up oh, yes. They may not have been ready for this particular soup, but they've <laughs> gone into the combs that I had built, but they haven't really started building much up here. Mm -hmm. Whereas that hive is a little bit more interest up here. And in fact, this is all that they've been building upstairs so far. So this hive is not quite ready for this box, but I was going around putting boxes on because I was afraid I wasn't going to get to them all in time for swarming and that sort of thing. Huge, great bird just flew over there. I don't know what it was. So we're full of resources here, honey. See how it's darker? This was white, but because the cappings are in contact with the honey, this is all honey here. So the cappings can vary from a bit from hive to hive. This is the, what's left of a um, hop guard mic treatment from last year. So you just leave them in? Uh, generally, they just chew it up, yeah, okay. so it doesn't really matter with that. But sometimes you'll see a, a strip of hot guard in there, so if I see, I'll pull it out. There's a queen cup here. I'm just going to have a look in there, and there's nothing in it, so that's good. There's nothing actually going on there. So they were just preparing? Yep, they will build them, even in the winter time, they'll have those queen cups built. Just okay. sort of like a... When it starts to be a cocoon. A, I don't know if it's like a, a reminder to the queen, look, we can do whatever we want. So, <laughs> just a reminder. 
but uh, or just being ready. I don't know if anyone actually knows. There are eggs here, so the queen has been up here. We've got eggs in here. Is she down below? She's probably in the super below. This is the last chance place to. Right now, I don't see her up here, so I would say that she is in the box below. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. down there. Now, you can imagine how much harder it is to see those white eggs on a yellow background. Yeah. That's why I love black foundation. So they're just expanding into here, maybe one frame less than they are in that one. But the queen's already been up here laying, which is good. Whoops. So, so as long as you see fresh eggs, um, you don't bother hunting down the queen. For Correct. Well, you don't. That tells you the queen is alive at least in the last three days, yeah. and if necessary, they could rebuild. Careful when you do that with your hat, because there's occasionally a bee right. There's a bee right here. Okay. <laughs> there's okay. one inch from where you put your hand both times. If you put it on the bee, you'd have a bee sting. So you're better off just leaving it there, and if necessary, just pull it down. Okay. Something like that. Uh, telling you the ways that I've been stung many times. Uh. So if we wanted to look down below, which we don't necessarily have to do, because we we actually know just about everything we need to know here already. We've got a queen. They're building up here. That really, for normal circumstances, would tell me everything I wanted to know. Oh but my. we're showing you the insides of beehives, so yeah, we're going to cool. look a bit further. Another useful thing about these. They make it a lot more comfortable to kneel on the ground. <laughs> so you see that the bees are following a normal pattern here. We've got honey on the outside edges, here and here. And they'll be brewed through most of these frames here. Now because we're going to dig into the brood chamber, we'll blow a bit of smoke in here. So they'll we watch them over they retreat a bit. Not much. But that's all we needed to do. You can hear that roar as the bees are trying to fan that smoke away. You can see a bit of brood in the top of the frames. That tells us quite a bit. The other thing that we can check, if we wanted to, just to see how big the cluster actually is. Sometimes it's a bit misleading just looking at the top. But if we look at it from underneath, which we have to get this off first. If we look at underneath here. Tells us a lot. So the bees are occupied from here to here. So they're occupying about seven out of the eight frames. Um, if there were queen cells in a single hive body like this, we'd probably start to see them here, but I'm not expecting to really see them because they've got lots of room and they've never been crowded. But this tells us just how full this box is. I probably could have waited another week or two before I put that last box on, but I didn't know if it was going to be a week or two before I got to these bees or not to thin them out. So you, so when you did put that box on, there were, what, how many frames? Probably pretty much the same as this. They've now put their effort into growing oh, okay. up here. And do you scrape that extra on the bottom off or do you leave that? Actually, when, because there's this extra space under here, mm -hmm. I don't normally need to, but when it comes, to, if it starts getting much bigger than that, as I take the frames out, I do. Because it'll tend to be in the way of taking the bees in and out. Yeah. Notice I've still got my mouse guard on and my entrance reducer on this hive. Because this hive overwintered as a single deep bowl by its, as it was, but now it's growing up quite nicely. It's hard to get into those, huh? That's right, everything gets glued together pretty well. This is where I wish I had my J tool, J hook one because it's easy to pry it up. I've tool on. Now, this comb wasn't completely built out. They've got honey here and here. This actually looks like sugar syrup from last year. Still have the screw in the entrance here for the be cozy that was over it. Now, there's still a lot of honey on the outside here. Again, left over from the winter. But here we're... How do you know it's left over from the winter? Because they haven't had time to make this much honey yet this year. Okay. And I know this hive because I've been in it quite a few times. Yep. So we've got lots of pollen that's freshly put in here. 
and this is usually the sign if you've got a lot of pollen packed on here it's usually the sign is that you're on the edge of the brood chamber where the brood actually are and I can see ahead of us that we are into the brood coming in this frame so do all of the, each of these bees know which box that they live in and just stay exclusively to the air? Generally, 99.9% yes. They okay. know exactly where they live and they keep going to it. But they will be, because there's food coming in and that sort of thing, they would be accepted if they drifted from one hive to the other, which happens also quite a bit. So we've got lots of brood here, honey here, but this is brood, so you're sort of coffee colored. Do you have any that are about to hatch, or is yep, this one hatching I'm just right looking there? For some. That's actually a face inwards. Okay. So, so this one is being tended. Okay. There's a couple of bees in the cells here, but we will find some where they're emerging. It's a queen cup there, but that's empty. More brood here. Not quite as solid a pattern as is ideal, but we will come into hives which have a lot more solid pattern than this. What would explain that, you know? Um, it can be a variety of things. Because over winter we had a variety of different, it, it tends to be a bit patchy over the winter time. Um, they still, this is a relatively small hive, they haven't really got going for the spring. And sometimes it can be as a result of the, the queen just being a bit patchy in her egg laying. But this, this hive is doing okay. I wouldn't say there's any, any problem with this queen. Okay. But she's not spectacular. She's, I'd say, this is pretty much okay. If um, you had a poorly performing yeah. queen, would you take it upon yourself to destroy her? To, yes. To... Yeah, that's exactly what we'd do. Okay. Uh, particularly as I, uh, I produce nukes and things. So well, I, I don't want to be waiting and waiting for a colony to make it um, build up. I want colonies that build up nice and quickly. Yeah. But as you can see, there is a lot of brood in here. A lot of activity, that's for sure. And to get them off, you would just simply shake it right into the hive? If I needed to. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But you wouldn't. Well, sometimes I do, but I don't need to right now. Right. Mostly pollen with a bit of patch of brood. Here's a bee emerging right now. This one here. Oh yeah. See the antennae sticking yeah. out and that sort of thing. Does he just She'll eat the out. wax around it after he eats all the? Yeah, she's sort of chewing away. Here's one that's almost out. And do the bees help? them out? Or Not it... usually, they just leave them to their own devices, but there she's going to get out very shortly. Yep. Cool. And when she comes out, she'll be very silver. See, this bee has just come out herself. Yep. Oh, and you yeah. said it only takes a couple hours or something for them to? I think so. It's during the course of the first 24 hours or so, I'd say she turns to the same color as the others. Super cool. So with all the brood in here, this colony will be occupying that upper super pretty soon. We've got lots of frames with um, emerging brood. You now this is this is now in this frame she's getting a more solid pattern. Yep. So this is a more recently filled out frame, more compact, food around it. And so she's more recently filled this out. So now the queen is starting to really get going here. That's more the pattern that you prefer to see. Yeah, and as we go into the season, she'll do even more. Oh, sorry? Is that a queen? This one's another queen cup. Yeah, a queen cup. Okay. Yeah, there's no no egg in there, so it's not what we call charged. How would you know if there was an egg in there? You'd tear it open like that and have a look. Okay. And also, usually that size, very rarely got a queen cell in it, a queen, an egg in it. If it's starting to elongate, then you've probably got an egg in there. Okay. And so you would routinely destroy it? If you, Generally, you yes, because them? I'm just looking just just to keep ahead of swarming and then um, yeah. then, then make a nuke out of them. Okay. So 
So we've even got brood on the next frame. So we've got brood on about seven of the ten combs down here. So if you didn't have the top, would this be a good time to put a top on? Or since, well, you already have another one. We've on. already got another super. So yeah. yes, this, this is ready for another super now. It's just that stage. They're fully occupying the other spaces. But the, the outside spaces that they're not really making use of, they're full of honey. So they can't make any more use of them. They're already full. So you, you have to consider that as really full. Yeah. Now we've been through the majority of this super and we still haven't found the queen. Mm -hmm. So she may have been there and we just missed her. But we know this hive is perfectly okay because we've got the eggs in there. But just like anyone else, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to see the queen every time going through the hive. But it's possible she's still on this frame here, the last one that we have. But I would say it's more likely that we just missed her on one of the other combs. Even with all our eyes looking for her. So they're putting honey in here. See, white foundation, it would be almost impossible to see an egg on this one. Mm -hmm. but we don't have, to have, don't have to see the eggs on every frame. So, Queen's in here somewhere. We know she's doing the business. So, we'll just close it back up and try and put it back in the order in which we took the frames apart. Tighten it up there. Should you be worried about like squishing them when you're setting that down? Or? Well, that's kind of why we do it this this way. Try and do it in a pattern. There's the fewest bees on here, or at least if they are here, they're usually at the least importance. The drones, but usually rarely the queen on the outside edges. So it's a good frame to take out first because you do tend to do some damage when they're coming in and out. And you don't want to accidentally roll the queen between two frames or anything. Like and she that. should feel you playing with it and move, right? Maybe, but uh, <laughs> you think. you can hope for it. But yeah. uh, I've I've rolled the queen before. Oh, you have. Yeah. Of course, it wasn't my hive, so I did it to somebody else's hive, which is always extra annoying <laughs> or embarrassing. Mm -hmm. But the hive would recover from that, obviously. Yep, they just re rear a new queen. See how that bigger hive is doing there now. Give ourselves more of a challenge. Now again, this green super was put on probably about the time that I put the supers on those two singles. But this was a double. And we'll see what a bigger hive was ready to do. Oh, we put a bit more room in there. Another entrance here, so let's put some smoke there. See how ready this one was for some more space. Clearly ready for a bit more space. Mm. You see, they've mm. occupied much more of this extra box. When did you put that box on? Same time as I did those, about a week ago. Yeah. And this is already with two deeps there. <clears throat> now, are they color coded to tell you when you put them on? No, but it, it so happens I painted a load of them green, okay. pale green like this. So you notice in the barn, I had a few pale green ones as well. They were just ones I happened to do it recently. Now see how the bees are sort of strung together here? This is called festooning. And in order to build comb, they will hold together in sort of daisy chains of bees. And with one pair of legs, they hold on to each other. With another pair of legs, they take the bits of wax off the scales as they develop and start molding them around. And with the other pair of legs, it's good to have three pairs of legs when you're a bee, they start molding it, chewing it, and building the comb. So two, one pair of legs holding the chain together and four, two pairs of legs working on the combs there, or the wax. So they're occupying this space and they have to hang motionless for about 14 hours, 12 to 14 hours to start making wax. And I'll slide down there, so we'll put it down. Here. What? Does she have a mite right there on top of her? Very unlikely. Nope, it's a little bug. But it's just a little bit bigger than a mite would be. The 
mites are not free moving around, they, you would only find them in the hive. Starting to build some comb out here, starting to draw the comb. And this is much more drawn on this side, but nothing being stored in it yet. And this one nearer the middle is drawn much more. I can feel there's quite a bit of weight of stuff in here, so they've been filling this up with honey. So you can see the liquid in there, that's full of honey. And this side is almost entirely full of honey. In fact, they're starting to cap the honey that they're starting to make this spring. So some of it's full of pollen, and most of this is honey. And that's all fresh in the last week. So this will be dandelion honey. Well, predominantly dandelion honey. This comb was already made when it went in here, I think. And the queen's been up here, she's laying eggs in the bottom. So I see eggs down here. So this is now the extension of the brood chamber from the second box into the third box. Mm -hmm. Lots of fresh honey up in the top here. And I expect the mirror image on this side. Now uh, we've got some queen cups here, which look a little bit bigger than normal queen cups. Yeah. So we're going to take it, open it up, and there is an egg. There is an egg in there. So this is the start of the process of wanting to swarm. So right in the bottom there, we've got an egg What's in those cells. Well, I'm going to open it up, but this, this gives me the heads up. If I don't get this hive thinned out, it will swarm. So this will be one that I'm going to get thinned out within the next day or two because they are that strong. Now it could be that there's more advanced queen cells down there. So we'll dig down a little bit and see what we can find. Unless we find the queen right now, and if we do, we could probably make a new, but uh, I don't think so. Plenty of eggs. This queen is really going to town laying eggs here. So this is the time you would take the queen, take some bees and put her in a... In a new? In a new. It would be a good... Yeah, if, if you know you're the, starting the process of swarming, this if I was just hobbyist beekeeper doing this without making nukes, what I would do is split the hive. Right. As soon as I found the queen, I would split the hive at this point. Because we know we've got lots of brood, right. both upstairs and the middle, probably at the very bottom as well. And we've got more developed brood here. She was, she's been laying here for at least five days, maybe six. There's more advanced brood here. So this is the first comb that she came in here to lay on. We've got more queen cups developing here. In fact, fairly big queen cups, so they're probably queen cells. And again, I can see eggs in some of them, and in here, and this is a bigger one. So we've got queen cells certainly developing. Is that something you've cut off? I would, but I'm not. I don't want to mess too much. Yeah. If I can tear it off, that way. You also want to be careful not to accidentally squish a queen that way. Yeah. And we're back into food for so moving out of the brood chamber into where they're storing more food. We've got one more queen cell with an egg in it. There's a really good view of the egg. Mm. Anyone not seen the egg in a queen cell yet? Sure see the egg right on the black there. background there. It's just that little tiny white line. That's right. Line. Yep. Oh, okay. Not that Potentially a queen. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. There's another one over here. They make them everywhere. Did anyone not see it? Again, more queen cups. No egg there. Not that it matters. Once you've got one, the clock is ticking. Yeah. Some more bees building comb up here. So because of the number of bees building comb and all that sort of thing, and it's still a good population of bees, I know they haven't swarmed yet, but given 
10 days unattended, they will. So that's roughly how much time I've got maximum to stop them swarming. So I'll probably be in here on when do uh, the honey supers come in play? I'm sorry? When do the honey supers go? Uh... Well, you can consider this a honey super if you like. Yeah. Um, it's just a deep one. Okay. Now, what I would do is if I was looking for just producing honey and I had no queen cells, what I would do at this stage, now that we've got several combs built, shake all the bees down into the super below, put my queen excluder on, and put this back on top. Then they continue to build. But now, because we've got queen cells, we're probably going to take a different course of action. Yeah. We have to thin, take action to stop them swarming. Yeah. Now we'll just look inside. Just want to see what it's like inside a bigger colony. This top makes it look like one of those little ones. But once we start going down further, it's going to look a little different. So now we've got a hive of bees. But isn't it nice how mm. gentle they are? They're still not reacting to us and things. These bees are really good temperament. I'll probably put a little bit of smoke. I'm not gonna go through the whole hive. We're not gonna go looking for the whole the queen everywhere because we just don't wanna, we wanna cover a lot of different things. But if we do see the queen, we'll do a mite check on this hive, which would be kind of handy. Would you move her to a different? Would I move her? I should because it's gonna take me forever. <laughs> what I need to find the queen is gonna take me forever. That's what I was thinking. So what would make sense is if I make a new cut of it right now, and then leave it queenless for a few days. I come back to it on Monday. Any queen cells that they're building, it'll be easy to find. I chop them out and I make my nuke. So maybe I will make a nuke, in fact. If we do find the queen, let's make a nuke. There we go. Yeah, I'd enjoy feature. seeing that. Oops. Yeah, when you're looking for the queen, is when it takes forever to find her. <laughs> Especially in a big, big brew chamber of three, brew, of three supers. So there's still a bit drawing comb out here. So this super went on before they finished building all the comb here. So that kind of goes with the territory. If I was just maintaining it and I wasn't worried about swarming, I'd take this frame out of the way and I'd put one of the built ones in its place. I'm starting to clean on this side. But she's not likely to be on frames of foundation, nor is she likely to be in a frame just full of honey. When we're looking for the queen, she's going to spend most of her time in areas where she can lay eggs. So I'm not likely to find her on a frame like this. Not impossible. It's still possible that she could be on a frame like this. But she's most likely to be in a frame where there's lots of empty space, lots of empty cells ready for her to lay on. So here's a nice load of brood and honey honey up here and solid with brood here and again we're not likely to find the queen on this spot because there's virtually nowhere for her to lay an egg she's more likely to be so we spend more time looking in those other places this side of th this side of this frame is just the same still full of honey or cat brood and you can see here as the cat broods emerging they're filling it up with honey pretty quickly queen cups there well, early queen cells. This is the sort of place that we would expect to find it. Lots of this brood has already emerged from here, so there's a lot more space where she can lay. So we'd spend more time checking a frame like this because this is the sort of place where she's more likely to be found because she spends so many hours on here filling it with eggs. Again, this is where she would be most likely laying. Yellow background, so it's hard to see if those are eggs in there or not. Now, I don't happen to see the queen on this frame, but we're gonna have a lot of frames that are like this. So knowing those little tricks of where to look for the queen really improves the chances that you're going to find the queen. Now there's more capped brood and developing brood on this frame. So while she could be here, uh, and there is some space that she could lay around the outer edges here, I would say that, again, less likely to be on this frame than on the previous one. 
so there's more space here but the space that I see is actually full of developing bees so again probably not so likely to be on this frame so we pass over it relatively quickly more empty space here so a higher probability but still two-thirds of the frame is filled up with stuff so it's not like a frame that's full of open space this one's full of pollen so again this side of the comb less likely so let's see all the multicolored pollens we've got a lot of different things in bloom so all that different colored pollen mm. <clears throat> so in addition to the size of the queen you're looking to see if there's people or bees parting company is that what's trying to you're yes, trying to that, that's right um I, i'd say i i try to i tend to focus on the abdomen looking for um that big abdomen on the Longer queen abdomen. Yeah. but the way the bees move tends to be a bit of a giveaway it's probably for me much more subconscious subconscious mm. that i actually see it catches my eye or something again these cells are pretty full Yeah, emerging, emerging, I was just going to say there's an emerging bee just there again, just coming out. We've had this hive open for about five minutes, the bees are still really calm. Mm -hmm. Lots of cat brood, see this nice dense pattern of laying? Mm. That's, that's what you like to see in a frame of brood. And there's plenty of bees that have been emerging here already and then getting back filled with either nectar or brood. Why are those sticking These are drones. Are they drones? Drone cells. Is this, uh, These are drones. The These are also drone cells. That's a drone cell just before it's been capped. Yeah. So along these outer edges you tend to have the abnormal sized cells which they tend to turn into drone brood. Drone cells. in the corners. Here's the sort of typical bullseye pattern. Honey, pollen, young larvae, older larvae. So it goes bullseyes out all the way around. Same here. Doesn't look like we're going to find our queen in this, this super. And I'm not proposing that we go all the way down looking for her. We'll look in the other hives. I want to show you some uh, queen cells as well. What's a reasonable amount of time to have your supers open? And Depends on the weather. If it's 85 degrees, you can have them open most of the day. Mm -hmm. But the bees do get ticked off after a while. Um, so I would say 10 minutes is all that you really need. Unless you can't um, find the queen. Because basically, <laughs> because when you, I mean, you, you really only need one minute. Basically, for this hive, I knew everything I needed to know just by looking at two frames up here. Um, now, let's say we didn't have this hive and we just had it like this. This would tell me, I'd look at this and say, number one, I need more room because I only had two, a frame and a half of empty space here. So I needed more supers. Um, I saw eggs very quickly, so I know the queen is okay. So, and I see plenty of resources there, but I see queen cells. Now, if I want to stop queen cells right now, I could go through every single hive, every single frame, and cut out every queen cell, but we know that's going to be pretty pointless at the moment, because eventually they, they would swarm. But for me, as I'm going to turn this into nukes, and now I've been through this brood chamber, I can just see that I've only got a few very early queen cells, so I've got at least a week before this hive will swarm. So this tells me that it's safe for me to leave it alone today without cutting out those queen cells and so it's going to be fine we've got some room they're going to continue to put their energy into that uh, for at least a week so that buys me the time i need to get back here 
and thin it out. When I do find the queen, I'll make a, a nuke just like these, ready for sale. And then I'll split all of these frames into two frames of brood per. When I make nukes to put a new queen in, I'll take a frame of resources, two frames of brood, they go into a box, maybe another frame of resources or a frame of foundation. Then I'll put the new queen in there and I'll leave them alone for about three weeks. The new queen comes out and the new pop the population starts to grow and they build out that foundation. Now it's pretty much ready for sale. So had a good look in here. We gave it a shot looking for the queen in this hive. But you see, even a big hive, it doesn't have to be intimidating. You see how gentle they've been. They've been really patient with us. Even though the conditions aren't exactly perfect today, it's not as bright and warm and sunny as it could be, but they're still, if they were angry, they'd be jumping up at my hand, bouncing off my hand um, in a threatening manner. Good girls. I didn't let Daddy down. Okay, now I'm going to show you some queen cells. Should you do that, put a rock on every lid? Typically, yes. I don't always. Be, and so, yeah, once you step, all these rocks around here can be really a trip hazard, an uh, ankle turning hazard. Also, be careful right around here. There's been a critter burrowing around in this. The ground is a little bit soft in some patches. But we're going to go over to that little pile of white new boxes over here. because I, I buy in Italians to grow on and sell to other people. I don't keep them to myself. Uh, but some people want Italians as they've heard a lot about Italians. But in this hive, they lost their queen in, in the journey. So they're in the process of replacing it. So I want to show you what emergency queen cells look like. These hives are way overcrowded. I think this frame has the emergency queen cells on that one or this one. No, it's not this frame. Where are all these guys to work? The They're just wondering. <laughs> See how they're not flying? They're all brand new bees that have just emerged from the queen from the uh, brood. But here are the queen cells here. Oh, yeah. And in fact, look, here's one that's, that has emerged already. Where? So we've got a virgin queen in here, unless it was killed. I'm just going to shake some bees off. So actually, we'll use the smoker to blow some of the, get some of the bees off. Uh, could it be that she's out flying? No, she won't be out flying yet. She'll be running around in here. The virgin will stay in the hive for three, for five days or so. Okay, now we have a lot less bees in here. But you see how the the brood suddenly stops at the edges here. Yeah. This these egg, these were just eggs when the queen died, probably because they got shaken around during transport. So they took four-day-old larvae. And, at which are all at about the same age, that means in the same place the queen goes around in circles to lay eggs and they're making these queen cells. Now, to me, this queen cell looks like it has emerged already because it was slightly older than these ones. This queen cell has emerged already. Do you know it's because it's farther back into further, the... It's further okay. in there, but also see how it's open. Yep. Here's another one that's emerged. And so they're just flying around in there they're, dead? Or? They're crawling around in here. We may see a virgin queen in here. But and these ones haven't even emerged yet. Right when they emerge, you can tell the difference. They're bigger. They are a little bigger. Now here's one that's damaged. So I'm going to open this up. And we may see a new queen. This one's damaged, so she wouldn't make it anyhow. Oh no, that's much younger. See, it's still a pupa. Yeah. Okay. But... If we look around here, we might find a virgin queen. There's a heck of a lot of bees here. 
and finding a virgin queen amongst them is much more challenging because she's so much smaller than is a normal queen. she's still slender? But yeah, she'll be slender, but she'll have a longer abdomen. Also, what she'll tend to do is walk across the combs much more quickly. So if we had a virgin queen in here, she'd be tending to run around in here, whereas these ones are staying pretty still. The virgin would be walking around a lot faster usually. Now, uh, laying eggs, obviously. So. Not yet, nope. But uh, I think it's early days yet before we get the. Uh, there's going to be more queens, uh, queens emerging here, and what's surprising is they haven't. It could be that just those cells were damaged, so we haven't got, ha actually got a queen out yet. That they've been just being removed, but uh, because there's. Normally what the queen will do is go around and destroy those other queen cells. But because they're not destroyed yet, I don't see any destroyed, it means that there's possibility we haven't got a virgin out here yet. It could have been that what we're looking at is cells where the bees removed it. Well, let's have a quick look. I reckon we've probably got a virgin queen in here somewhere. Chances are... Mm. That's a drone. Just a drone. Now, would the other bees part way for her? Not usually, no. With the virgin, she's got different... Um, now, there's also more cells here. But she has different pheromones. She's not producing the pheromones, which tell them queen bee. Okay. Um, so it's really got to be a challenge. Is that in there? Yes. Well done. Virgin queen right here. Oh, yeah. See, so she's got a longer abdomen. Good eye. So is this when you would take she's her She's looking in inside. Well, she's looking in there. She might be. Is this when you could take her and start a new hive with her? Potentially. You could do it at any stage while they're from a queen cell to a fully developed queen. But we've got at least one virgin walking around in here, and we probably have others. Could you point her out again? <laughs> right here. You can see she's still quite gray by comparison. It's quite silvery compared to the others, so she's literally only just emerged in the lab today. Oh, now the other I thing about the queen, oh yeah, and the other thing about the queen is she has a bold back, whereas the workers have a fuzzy back. Oh. And she's got yeah, a bigger head too, right? Uh, the head's about the same, I'd say, yeah. overall. And the bald back stays that way? Yep. The yep. for me is the no black stripe sort of. Yep, that, that can also be, the, the coloration of the queens varies enormously. Mm -hmm. Now with the Saskatraz queens, they tend to be darker. But these Italian queens tend to be a sort of a yellowy orange color. But to me, compared to now I've been so used to seeing the Saskatraz queens, they look kind of sickly by me <laughs> to me now. They look a little bit washed out. I thought I just saw another queen here. Maybe not. Okay, so we've seen a bit of the queen and queen cells and that sort of thing. As stripey in the abdomen? Yeah. So you see how tricky it can be to spot a virgin queen. Yeah. Yeah. Define black. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to be doing it. More like <laughs> insect yeah. abdomen. And yeah. A lot, of, a lot of bees in here. I'm going to thin these out. Okay, let's look inside another hive. Now also, these, so all of here. these hives here are also Italian. This was a queen cage, which is what uh, some of these bees, queens came in, and they were introduced into the hive that way. But in these hives here, we've got um, Italians that were at this stage about three weeks ago. I put another super on them last week. Do you want your smoker? Sure, please. Wherever I left that. Oh, thank you. So I've added a super onto this hive. At the same time, I added it onto the other hive. So you can see it's pretty full of bees now already. Where do you hold it? Your smoker? Yeah. Hold, hold it by him. the bellows generally. Oh, hold you do? By this, yeah. Okay. And that way you just... Not me worrying about wasting the smoke. Nope, don't worry about it. <laughs> so there were a lot of bees on the top, but you can see if we look in there, there's actually lots of foundation here still. But uh, there may be... This, this hive 
are being grown on and they're just about ready to split. Not quite ready to split yet. See, they're just not even really building the comb here yet. This frame they are starting to build foam. And the queen will be laying on here pretty soon, but not yet. There's, the cells are empty here still. Is the queen on there? Nope, not on this no. one. She might be on the next one, because these cells will be bigger, so she could have laid in these. Unless they're full of honey, but it feels like it's full of honey, it's heavy. Yeah. But there are some eggs here. So she's been up here and laid on this part. Now these queens, being Italians, should be a lighter color. And also one or two of these ones are marked. I've seen a few drones. What are they doing? What do they they're, do? They're still young. They're not. They're not. They're mostly, mostly the drones are out to fly, out flying, and out looking for a queen to mate with. Ooh. Are those drones? That are sticking up. These ones down here? No, they're queen cells. Damn it. Look at these queen cells here. Are those queens? Yeah, these are drone cells. Those are drones, okay. But these are queen cells. Look at this. Full of royal jelly. Oh, yeah. And so this hive, even though it's... They haven't really occupied here, they're already starting the process of wanting to swarm here. So I'm going to have to thin all of these this week. Oh, that's a lot of work. You have a busy week. <laughs> I've got a busy week coming up. Yep, I didn't want them to do that, but their conditions are so perfect for them. Mm -hmm. They're taking every opportunity to swarm that they can do. <laughs> and this hive is a little more advanced in the queen cell development than the last one, wasn't it? Yeah. See how the cells were full of royal jelly? Those will be capped queen cells in a matter of days. See how almost how pretty big those ones are. Mm -hmm. That's all royal jelly. Reprioritizes my week. Now, what if you just wanted a little bit of honey for your coffee? Could you scrape it off there? Sure. Yeah. If I wanted some honey, just a lot yeah. of honey. Okay. Really light colored honey as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, will they repurpose mm -hmm. that? Yep. Oh, they'll eat that honey right up? Yep, they will. And they may reposition it, or they just consume it. Is that going to kill that bee that you just squished it on? Well, she got kind of wet with it, but I think she might recover. The other bees are going to spend time cleaning Clean her off. Clean her off. Okay. Yeah. That's what so I she looks at, She'll probably make it. Yep. The sauce is here, and this 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 is super. This a bee? That's a drone. Two drones right next to each other there. you expect more queen cells in the bottom? Yes. There's more advanced brood up there. Down there. Ho-hum. Uh, so, yep, yeah, more work to be done. <laughs> Fun never stops. That's right. That's right. They keep you running. It's like a garden. It is. It's it is. If you don't, don't keep garden. ahead of it, it <laughs> runs away with you. Don't be surprised. We've got the same thing going on here. Now these bees are a little bit more tetchy, they're jumping up at my hand a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So these are not quite mm -hmm. as 
And these, these are Italians. These have the reputation for being gentle, but uh, it's all relative. Everything's glued down. Hold down with drone brood probably between this super and the next one below it. They're a little bit more shaky, these bees. They're moving around a little bit more. Yeah, they're faster. I much prefer to deal with a colony where the bees stay still. So if I'm choosing a, a queen to, to um, breed from and collect eggs from, I choose one with the characteristics of moving around less than this. There's eggs up here, so we could have a queen up here pretty shortly. So this is full of eggs. If you kill their queen, do they get mad? Like if you squish her on accident? Um, like, they wouldn't know? react immediately, but within 10 minutes the whole colony would be behaving differently. Okay. Yeah. This is just full of eggs. This is where you would expect her, right? Yeah. Oh, well, she actually seems to have filled up just about every cell, but she's certainly spent some time up here. But I would expect her in one of these frames where she has lots of room like this. But she seems to have filled just about every cell in this frame. Eggs everywhere. Well, anyone wants to hold this and have a look, just get a quick close look. It? But that would be a characteristic you'd like in a queen. Certainly, laying lots of eggs. Well, she has lots of room to do it and a lot of resources behind her, a lot of bees to keep everything warm. So nothing's holding her back right now. Oh boy, I see her. Look at that kid and look, look at this larvae here. So look how beautifully that's filled out with larvae. Oh, you want to yeah, take it? Oh, oh, so cool. Look at the bottom of the thing. It's just a little white tick mark. Is that full of like No, no egg in there. Than so actually this hive doesn't really, isn't at the, the point of wanting to swarm yet. Do they have to fill it full of royal jelly first? Um, you see, yeah, first you see an egg, that small, uh -huh. then once that egg hatches, they start filling it with royal jelly. So if it's got royal jelly and the egg has been there for at least three days, okay. it's developing. Look at all that young brood. Second frame of it, this green has just been going out. flat out. Oh, it just came out. I think he was going in. Going in after something. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so the ones that have their faces in there, they're yeah. tending to the brood inside there. Oh. Feeding them, cleaning them, whatever. Oh, yeah. Do they feed them royal? At the very they... early royal jelly, and then there's a mixture of pollen and honey. Okay. Oh. I don't know which side was facing which way. It matters. No, not desperately. So royal jelly is like their breast milk. So they got yep. nutrient filled. All, all the here bees. she is. Here's the queen. Lots of empty space. Here's the queen right here. Oh yeah. Oh, she's oh, nice and big. Mind. A bit more oh, yeah. orange. Noticeably yeah. bigger. But yeah. she's got all sorts of space on this frame. This is why she's here. Yeah. Ball thorax really stands out. And you're not going to be scared she's going to fly away? Nope, she doesn't want to fly. Actually, she's been laying eggs so, so heavily that she's probably too heavy her. to fly. Hmm. If, if they were going to swarm, they would actually stop her. They would start chasing around the hive for a bit to uh, make her lose weight so she could fly. Hmm. If she tried to fly, she'd probably jump off the landing board and land on the ground <laughs> right now. Hmm. So they only fly at the beginning? To, when, they're, when they're very young or when they're, and... when, they're pro when they're ready to swarm. Right. And then they have to go on a quick fitness campaign to... Uh, How long does it take? <laughs> a couple days go. for their fitness program? Or? Oh, probably just... Uh, 12 hours or so, they just slow, slow down feeding her and that sort of thing. They work so fast. They do. 12 hours. Mm. 12 but hours. you didn't see any queen... What no queen them? cells in this queen hive, cells. so this hive is not quite ready to swarm. This is where I was hoping the rest of them would be. But boy, she, they've really filled up with brood in here. I feel, I feel like these ones have been going ear. towards my face a little more. 
So the queen is continuing mm. laying eggs for how long? Um, or well, could be? Seasonally, she'll be laying seasonally. eggs from January till about October. Um, but she can lay eggs for several years, <laughs> quite a few years. From just that one? From that one day mating. One day? Yeah. So one her day body day. has a capability of somehow. Yep, she stores a, a, lot of, a lot of sperm in there so she can just keep on laying. Okay, let's uh, look at one more uh, smaller hive where it might be easier to see what's going on. In fact, this is a good one on the field. This, this is your sugar my, water, right? It is. This, this hive, when I had my last beginner's class on the 1st of May, we installed a package of bees into this, into this hive. <clears throat> so we will see if, and I haven't been in here since, so I'm just working on the assumption that the queen emerged in here from here quite nicely and is going. Now, if she didn't, then the hive will be hopelessly queenless and they may even be laying workers, which would be a problem. But hopefully the queen was released as expected and they're busy busy rearing lots and lots of brood. I feel bad if she was still in there. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a bit rough. Okay. Now I left the rim on. Remember what I said would happen if we leave the rim on? I forgot about the rim. Lots of honey. It's all of this honey and wax being stored here. Now would you just put this in down in that or do you just scrape that off and Well what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean it off. So Get the bees off it. Maybe a bit more. So now, nice honey in there. Feel free to have a taste of that. Now. But a queen was in an unusual, different type of cage here. But in this style of queen cage, there is a dead bee in there, but I don't think it's a queen. So that's just because you left that thing in there. For that's because I left that space there. That's right. Is that how long do you leave it in there for? Three days, right? Yes, that's okay. right. Normally, that's what you do. Right. So uh, you leave that cage, the round thing, in there for three days until the queen bee's down in. Okay. So now we're going into the queen chamber, and oh dear, what we have <laughs> You've already is got she queen. did. There was a queen in here. And they've also raised new queens. What happened? Let's go into the middle and tell the story of what happened here. So what's happened here is we had a new queen. She laid eggs. And for some reason, they didn't like her. And so they started to rear queen cells. Or they killed her by accident and, uh, for some reason. And here's the signs that a queen has emerged from this cell. On this side, a queen, this was destroyed from the side, as was this one. So the new queen that emerged has been round and killed her Where's sister. Where's the side? How do you know? Because see how the cap is still, the bottom is still there? Oh, the side has been removed. Out. Okay. And so we ha probably have a virgin in here somewhere. That's killed those ones? In fact, she may not be a virgin. She may have already started to lay eggs. And I see the odd egg in here. So we may have a young queen who emerged about a few days eggs. afterwards, yep. Yeah. And then um, they killed the old queen, and the new queen is now taking over soon. Lots of pollen in here. Nicey. Oh, yeah. yeah look at this. Yeah, look there. Yeah, heading in there, just checking out the resources. So this hive did not take off as, as one would have liked, and as we could have possibly managed, but the queen got out and started to lay. No, this is uh, Italian. Italian still. Okay. So it's a very small colony now because they haven't had new brood uh, emerging yet. And they're also making a bit of a roaring sound, which would infer that they're queenless. 
Oh, hear that sort of higher yeah. that buzzing sound? That would infer that the queen, they may not have a new queen yet. And the new queen that they raised may not have successfully come back and um, started to lay. So are they talking to each other? Sort of. Um, but I thought I could see eggs in here, and I do see some eggs. It looks like eggs. Yeah, we do have some eggs at the bottom of the cell, so that would infer that we do have a, a queen in here somewhere. Um, not a laying worker, but I'm looking to see. If you have laying workers, you tend to have multiple eggs in one cell, and I don't see multiple eggs in one cell. I just see individual cells and eggs, and they're at the bottom of the cell, so I think we have a young queen in here. And once she becomes established, then they'll stop that roaring sound. How long, how many days does that take? Uh, it's hard to say. It depends how quickly, how well she mated and how successfully she did. Are they all over there in the middle? Well, yeah, that's another There's a queen, uh, open queen cell there. So that one hatched already? Yep. Yeah. Now, the, that noise infers to me queenless. That's the sort of roaring sound that you get from a queenless colony. So it could be that the eggs that we see are from laying workers. I will find out over the next days or two. You'll just keep an eye on this now? Uh, yeah, but I, I would say that this hive is going to be queenless. Now, that, when that's my hunch. would you come out here like this, like if this was morning or this was two o'clock, you come out here tomorrow? Like, or. When do you check it again to make sure the queen is gone? Yeah, I would probably check it again in two or three days, but okay. uh, because I can see some eggs in there. But um, if things look normal, then I might just leave it alone. But otherwise, what I might do is just combine a nuke with it, just to. Um, this is a tiny little hive, and what I need to do is have this space used by a hive that's going to grow quickly. So I might put the equivalent of one of those nukes into a hive like this, and just combine the two together. Okay. Yeah. Now, could you combine, could you put like the other kind of bees in there? The as yep, I can't, sassy, 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 sassy. Yeah. I can't say it. I even tried to look them up after he told me what size are for us. See, I'm just going to put this cover on. I'm not even going to bother with yeah. an inner cover. It inner sounds cover like Azkaz from Harry Potter. <laughs> it helps. So, do you think it was because you left that? No, nothing to do with it. No, it's just bad luck. Queen was the, the queen started to lay, and for some reason they turned on her. Probably because the, the, shortly after introducing her, the weather is pretty lousy for a week or so, yeah, and under those conditions, they're a little less likely to accept the new queen. Yeah. This looks like a busy hive. Why don't we have a look into a one more busy hive here? See if we can see another queen. How often do you come get honey? Come and get honey? Uh, usually from July onwards I'm getting honey most weeks bring it in, doing some extracting, yeah. that sort of thing. But typically, I'm concentrating on making bees right now. And uh, that's my big crop of the year is producing bees. Um, and then honey is uh, subsequently. So if everything goes right, well, we should start producing honey in the middle of July or something? With the yeah, you're under. probably actually, for brand new hives, I would say more likely September. You're taking off one crop in September. Yep. But under the right conditions, yeah, you could get it off in July. Okay. And a brand new hive could conceivably produce 100 pounds of honey in its first year, but more often than not, it's more like 25 to 40 pounds. Okay. I see they're making plenty of honey already right now. Yeah.
got eggs in the bottom of these cells here. <laughs> Plenty of honey and resources coming in. Yeah, I'm pretty confident I'm going to have the odd swarm here that I'm not going to be able to keep ahead of. <laughs> you do take all by yourself? You do all no, I have some help. Some, some guys come in to help me. And one or two of my students come in to get some experience. So it's okay if I drive over next week sometime and just park my car across the street with a catcher box? Sure, that's right. Swarm <laughs> <laughs> traps out there. Give me a call when it looks like it's done. Look at all that, honey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all brand new. Look and see if we can find the queen. If we can, we'll do one one more mite test. That's really stuck. Oh yeah, they glued everything in here pretty well. So you just start at the corners and generally trying to loosen it up. Yep. So you can get a grip of it. I should have brought my frame grip out. I always forget to bring a frame grip out, which is a Surprisingly useful tool. Full of Is it kind of like here. one of those fuse pliers where you reach in and pull the fuse out uh -huh. pretty easily? Yeah, full of pollen and honey. So, this is the start pollen. of honey pods, right? Like yeah, these are actually just full of pollen. And they never really completely fill the cell with pollen. They fill it two thirds of the way, maybe, and then top it off with honey. But this, okay. tell, this tells me that we're probably right at the edge of the brood chamber here. Yeah, the, the back ones. Which means everything's full. Uh, I mean, this, this bottom part is pretty full and they're expanding into that top. upper chamber nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at this. This is oh, wow. perfect pattern. The cells in the middle have all been emerging and the, this is bees, a line of emerging bees here. And the queen will be looking for space in this sort of area to relay. Look how full of bees it is. Yeah. Well, look, oh boy, we've got queen no. cells as well. That's not her? No. That's a drone. I think. Oh, oh maybe. But we've got queen cells, even though there was all the room in the world. We've got queen cells all over here. But it's hairy. Detecting a pattern. Yep. <laughs> this, this year, there is going to be one. They're just going to be swarming left, right, and center. <laughs> Um, there's all this royal jelly here. Is that, what do you, do, can you do anything with royal jelly? Well, you put it on your toes? Potentially market it. Um, it's very expensive stuff. Is it edible? I, I presume so. People do eat it. But even these little hives are going to swarm on me. Oh my goodness, I've got to do a lot of thinning out. Mm. <laughs> all your workers. Yep. Now here's a drone yeah, larvae. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to see, do I see any drone? Any mite on it? That's what I mean about. Right, yeah. Oh, you can just move uh, them. Right. I'm trying to, but it's actually sma smashing, unfortunately. I think you took his head off. Oh, that was his butt. But sometimes you can expose mites just this way, just cutting the caps off them. And does that. The bees don't care if you kill the drones, right? Not particularly. Right. They don't like, like it. They don't you. like it when you're messing around with their brood. No. But we don't have to feed them. Yeah. I tried to with my mask on, but it didn't work out very well. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I didn't. <laughs> push it really suck it on, suck on it. Yeah. <laughs> my own. Yeah. Oh, no, I already have some. Oh, you did? That's what oh, yeah, you got, yeah, I gave her. <laughs> she went up underneath. Oh, look. That's a little thing in there. Oh, extra protein. Yeah. Is the honey good? It's delicious. It's intensely sweet. Couldn't be any fresher, that's for sure. Don't, don't. 
swallow the wax, right? Oh, you can swallow the wax, all right. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. Oh my, look at that. Well, it's full of brood. <laughs> that is full of brood. Look at that. Now, what is this? Is that just a young bee? Yep. It's just flake colored. Yep, she's just, just emerged. Okay. So they emerge from that brown spot. Yes. Yeah, from the empty yep. cells there. That's right. Huh. You think she'd be walking on top just as the queen bee? Not usually. Not yeah. usually. Walking she's looking for somewhere to deposit eggs. That's her yeah. job. That's her role. Well, that's pretty full. It is. So There's not much, not there, much right? space here. On this side, there is oh, space. Look at the pollen. Look at the red. That's right. Yeah, you got red. You got yellow, orange. Oh, you got her? No. Yeah, right there. No, that's a no, drone. It's a drone. Oh yeah, it's not got the skinny butt. That's right. Got a fat hairy butt. Does your wife like these? She she calls herself an enthusiastic observer. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Is she the, uh, does she make all the wood bombs? No, actually, it's all my project, really. Nice. She'll help sometimes with that. So these are just about to get capped over, right? Correct, yep. The, and the queen is on this frame. See how much bigger she is. Yeah. yeah. And they do get out of the way. So we can do another mic check just before we finish off. Yeah. So we have the queen and here. You shouldn't break all this stuff off, right? I should, but I'm, I'm going to leave it. What is that to stuff? It. This? There's a drone what? lobby and queen cells. Mm. <laughs> so what I want is open brood. That's cool, huh? Yeah. I suspect it. this frame will be mostly <laughs> open brood. Mm. That's no, it's mostly close. cat brood. Yeah. Lots of pollen. So, so the next tell one. you what, I'm gonna put the queen back here. One frame along. She's on this side. She? I know I want to eat it. Yeah. You can. <laughs> oh, I know why you want to need a hold it. Yes. <laughs> Wash these gloves or just like rinse them under water? Oh, yeah. yeah, you can do. Leather, right? yeah. So you want to get one that's like they were just hatched? More open. Yeah, right. I, I want it actually more open so the bees are busy looking after like this one. Thank you, that's exactly what we need next. Just... So lots of open cells. Okay. It's that t t sort of area that lots of house bees will be on. Do they know they're about to die. Not yet. So these are going, I'll cut out these queen cells while we're at it. Some smoke on there to avoid squishing some of the bees. 
quick. Slow smoke, they'll retire down. Point it right down at the frames and see it's working. Particularly around the edges. This edge over here. And We minimize casualties where we can, but you're going to switch back. I'm afraid there's no two ways about it. This happens, huh? Yeah. Okay, so we have now shaken this pretty thoroughly. zero if I don't have a mic to show you. That's good news. Yeah. Normally you would see a little red speck. Red. There's a little bits in there which are close to the size of a mic but we don't have any mics in there. Okay so they are going to be that big. They're going to be pretty big. No they're going like to be... Like a pin needle big? A needle pin head. Yep. Pin head mm -hmm. size. But we don't have that. They, they would tend to sink down here. There's little flakes in there but they're not mics. That's close to the size of a mic, but not mics. Do they turn red because of the that, or are they normally red? No, they, normally they are red. normally reddish, oh. normally red brown, like they were in the pictures. So I think we're gonna call that a day. If anyone has any further questions, just don't hesitate. Away. But, um, just time for a low battery, twenty percent. Is that right? Where's your sugar water? Do you not have any for them right now? Is it? Um, well, actually, I put some sugar water in this little bit feed it here, but they drank, drank it all yesterday. Okay. So, but right now, just the bottom feeder is good to get, right? Well, actually, actually, I don't have feeders in most of these hives. Just about every, none of these hives do. Um, they're a little bit underfed, if anything. Okay. But uh, that's why I have an open feeder here, and they help themselves to that. Couldn't but, an open uh, feeder be, like, um, right beside like a it can hummingbird be, it's, it's, feeder? Yes, but it's better to put right in the hive. Bird. Yeah, like that hive had yep. feeder. Yep, I'm going to grab one of those. Yeah. Actually, I'm out of them right now, but I will have them in stock in the next week. They're yeah. on I just live they don't an hour and a half away. Oh. Yeah. I'll order you it online. All the time or just only one? Um, generally in the spring, they get fed. Uh, they should be being fed most of the time yep. while they're growing up. Um, and then in the fall, you intensively feed when they're being prepared for the winter. My crop saved me today. I stepped on a nail. Oh, you okay? Yeah, no, it, did, it didn't go through, but it... Okay. 